Hi, my name is Jim Uhas. I'm the Director of Instruction with the Kendall Academy of Golf here at Miles of Golf. And today we're going to talk about playing ready golf. I hear it all the time from my, my beginning students. Their biggest fear really isn't about trying to get the ball to go in the air. Their biggest fear about going to the golf course is holding up the group behind them. So I'm going to talk, give you a few tips today on how to be prepared for that. So first is it starts at the range. We want to make sure that we know how far we hit our clubs. It's shocking to me how many times I'll ask somebody, so how far do you hit your seven iron? They're like, well, I don't know. How you can play golf with not knowing how far a club goes is beyond me. But when you're at the range, you'll see flag sticks or markers out there that'll let you know how far that ball's flying. If you're practicing at miles of golf, they've installed top tracer technology, which will tell you how far your ball flies every single time. So when you're practicing, you can get a pretty good average of how far each club goes. You usually can kind of gauge it just off of one club. If you know how far the seven iron goes, there's usually a ballpark of eight to 10 yards difference in between clubs, and you can kind of go from there. If you're a higher swing speed player, you might have a wider range, but a good ballpark starting is about 10 yards. So now we know how far our ball goes. So now we need to go to the golf course and be ready to play golf. The first thing that we see a lot on the golf course is people like to ride the carts. When you are a pair in a cart, it doesn't mean that you are joined at the hip. It means that you're sharing the cart. So when the first player goes to their ball to get ready to hit, you don't have to stay there. When that person grabs their club and they're getting ready to hit, you can, it's okay if you were the passenger to drive to your ball. Now you can start preparing for your shot. If you're a walker, a lot of players like to walk when they play golf. It's great exercise. If you're walking 18 holes of golf, depending on the length of the golf course, you might be getting anywhere from four to seven miles of walking in, whether you're pushing your clubs or you're carrying the clubs on your shoulder. So as a walking group, you're all gonna leave the tee box together. But once you start nearing your golf balls, it's okay to split up. You can go to your ball while somebody else is preparing to hit. The furthest from the hole is gonna play first. And you can go to your ball as long as you're not too far forward. We don't want anybody getting hit with a golf ball. Once you get to your ball, you're gonna set your clubs down near your ball, just to the outside line of your golf ball. Now, we need to know how far we are from the hole because our practice at the range has told us how far we hit our clubs. So, if some golf courses have stakes that are marked, they're usually red, white, and blue stakes. Blue's 200 yards from the green, from the center of the green, white's 150, and red is 100. Also, golf courses will mark sprinkler heads. So as you're walking to your golf ball or riding to your golf ball, start paying attention to the sprinkler heads. It'll give you an idea how far you are away from the hole. Or you may have purchased a range finder. A range finder is gonna be very, very accurate. All you have to do is pull the range finder up, click on the flag stick, and it'll tell you exactly how far away from the hole that you are. Now, even though this person's getting ready to hit and it's gonna be my turn next, now I've picked my yardage, I know which club I need, so I'm gonna be ready. So now I watch the, my playing partner hit, and I'm gonna follow their ball until it comes to rest because maybe they lost sight of it, and I can help them find their golf ball. Once I see their ball come to rest, then I'm gonna go through my routine, and I'm gonna hit. Another way that will make you play a little bit quicker is you don't need like 17 practice swings before you hit a golf ball. Take one or two practice swings, if that's what you wanna do, and then hit. So now we hit our golf shot toward the green, and now it's time to putt. So whether I sling my clubs back over my shoulder or I jump in the cart, off to the green we go. I get up to the green, I look, and I, man, I don't know if my ball stayed on the green or not. I might've went over the back edge. The mistake a lot of players make is they'll say, you know what, I think it's on the green. So they take their putter, they walk all the way over to the other side of the green, and they realize it's not on the green. If you're unsure if it's puttable 
or if it's just barely off the green and you might hit the little chip shot, or if it may be rolled a little further off the green and you have to hit a pitch shot, take all the clubs with you. Take the club you like to chip with, your putter, the club you like to hit your little pitch shots with, take them all with you. Now you go over to your spot, you find out what kind of shot you need to hit. Then once you're on the green, the two clubs that you, that you took with you that you're no longer gonna use, set them on the edge of the green between the hole and where your bag or cart is parked. So you're not halfway onto the next hole and realize, oh boy, I left my wedge back there. Now you gotta go all the way back. And you'll never lose a club that way. So I hope some of these tips help kind of get rid of some of those nerves about worrying about holding that group up behind you. Remember, golf's a game and it, we should have fun. So enjoy yourself, be respectful of other players out there. I hope this has helped. Um, thanks for watching and if you want any other information or see some other tips, you can go to milesofgolf.com and hope to see you around here soon.